Good morning, good morning, good morning again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we are going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers as to why we switched locations, well, the battery on my computer is dying, and I want to get this out and done with so I can go about the rest of my day. So just be aware of that. All right, to the disclaimers. In the description box, you're going to find all the pertinent links in regards to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well as the campaign against the troubled teen industry. One of the most noteworthy is going to be Neural Clastic's article in which they surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the so-called treatment at the JRC. It is, it, is, it is a particular article that the JRC felt was threatening enough that they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, folks, so please do read that article and share it on all your social media. You'll find the public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat as well as a link to their GoFundMe as well. If you are new to this either campaign, please, folks, all of those links will get you well, well informed in regards to both campaigns, okay? When we discuss places like the JRC and like Agape, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities and mental health issues being tortured and abused so if you've got young children present please use your headphones all right trigger warning this channel is marked not for kids for a reason as noted we are going to be discussing dark subjects and use profanity on occasion so if your child is 16 and younger and watching this very obviously folks parental supervision is advised all right all right, so where we left off last time. The IDEA has even less app, blah, God, I can't talk this morning, applicability as a remedy for the use of aversives in private settings as the court in King versus Pioneer Regional Educational Service Agency established. Yeah. Remember, folks, I need you to know the IDEA. I also need you to know what it covers and what it doesn't. It does cover the fact, the right to proper and appropriate public education for your disabled kids. So when your school district tries to get away with simply babysitting your kids for eight hours a day until they honorary graduate, <coughs> allergies folks, sorry. I know that was loud. I apologize. That's what that law is there for. It acts as a way to force the educators from your school districts to do their job. What it does not cover is behavioral issues. It does not cover treatments because that's not its job. It is in regards to education, not medicine. So trying to use the IDEA to sue in regards to inappropriate adversives is about the same use as me arguing with the wall over there. Okay? A very important law for you to know to make sure that the school is doing its job and properly educating your kid, regardless of whether they think it's useless or not. More often than not, they feel it's useless. But this is not the law to use in if you are trying a civil lawsuit against a school district in regards to aversives, okay? Because they're going to defer to the so-called authorities every time. You might as well shoot yourself in the foot. It will probably have more of an impact. All right. 
That is why we're trying to get the laws passed that we are, because the current laws on the books <clears throat> are useless against it, if they even mention adversives at all. But let's move forward, shall we? I may get up and put my headphones down for a moment. I very obviously need a cough drop. The fall allergies are being murder on me this morning. When a student's parents sued the State Department of Education Department under IDEA. <clears throat> One second, folks. I got to get that cough drop. I'm sorry. One second, folks. Fall allergies suck, folks. Just saying. All right. Overall, it refused to rule in such a way that it would prohibit the use of restraint. Oh. Gosh, sorry, folks. <laughs> when students' parents sued the State Department of Education under IDEA after the student had committed suicide in a seclusion room at a private residential program that the school had placed him at, the Georgia Court of Appeals ruled that the department was not responsible. See what I mean by kicking the can down the road, folks? It's just as true when it comes to liability as to anything else. That's why it's important to know what the IDEA covers and what it doesn't. This was because it had not been directly involved in the use of seclusion that had led to the suicide. See? Thus, even if the use of adversives in a private setting could ever be considered to deny a child a meaningful educational benefit for the purposes of a free, appropriate public education, there would be almost no situation in which a child could seek redress for this denial from the school or agency responsible for his or her placement, given that the entity would necessarily not be involved in making decisions over individual uses of adversives. So essentially, they get to wash their hands of it, because although they are responsible for the placement, once the placement has been made, the new private entity is now responsible. Private entities have access to thousands, millions of dollars. You see where I'm going with, right? All right. That's why so many civil lawsuits usually use human rights as opposed to some of these laws on the books, okay? Furthermore, the court pointed out, based on the prior case law, that the IDEA did not exist for the purpose of being used as a tort statute against schools and state agencies in the way that the plaintiffs in this case intended to use it namely for the purposes of obtaining monetary damages, firming or limiting its use in addressing the misuse of adversives. Now, you remember when I said in the previous video that the IDEA in particular deals strictly with education, right? That's because that's all it addresses. It does not in any way, shape, or form address in regards to treatment programs when dealing with disabled kids. What happens is the ill-equipped and severely underfunded special ed programs will get these kids sent to private settings. In these private settings, 
both the education aspects and the treatment aspects are made one. But the IDEA in and of itself only addresses the education side of it. It does not address the treatment side of it. Okay? That is why when trying to use this as a means to sue places like the JRC, it often falls short. If you are going to use the IDEA to go after places like this, you have to be very careful in your wording in regards to that lawsuit. If your kid is not being granted a, an appropriate education, if they're basically just being sent in there to get babysitted and no one's actually making an effort to educate your child, that is where you can use the IDEA. But if it has to do with adversives and anything that can be skewed towards treatment as opposed to the educational side, you see where I'm going here, right? That's why many who have gone against the JRC have done so with either human rights or they have <clears throat> gone with medical malpractice, okay? This is why the federal laws are needed, folks, because as I've stated to you before, the laws on the books are not specific enough. All right, let's move on here. Finally, civil rights law prohibiting discrimination on the basis of disability may provide an avenue for children injured by the use of adversives to pursue seeking protection or relief. That has been the main one. There's medical malpractice for one, but the civil rights one and the human rights one is number uno one. Being discriminated against to the point that our human rights are being violated in alphabetical order, parents play particularly close attention here because if you want to redress about how your kids are being treated by these so-called professionals this is what you use there are two major such statutes please take notes pause this video grab your notebooks and grab your pins folks those being the Rehabilitation Act and the Americans with Disabilities Act. Both the Rehabilitation Act and the ADA prohibit discrimination on the basis of disability in providing access, services, and funding, and require covered entities to provide reasonable accommodations to allow access to people with disabilities. These two acts were done, folks, in particular so that the civil rights of the kids and adults with disabilities be respected. No, in particular, reasonable accommodations. Like, highlight it. Put it in all caps. Okay? Moving on. The main difference between the two laws is that while the former applies only to entities that receive federal funding, such as public schools, the latter applies to state and private entities as well, including private schools and programs. You see why we use it? You're seeing this, right? Yeah. Aside from that, however, the analysis used in assessing claims under both statutes is much the same, as they contain similar language in terms of what they prohibit and require. Again, with the language, right? That's why we have the current amendment 
for those laws that we're trying to get on the books right now. Because once again, although it does provide protection on paper, <clears throat> they're the kind of holes you could drive a diesel truck through. So what is this telling us, folks? Well, it's very simple. It is demonstrating for you why so many suits get thrown out to start off with. When trying to sue under the IDEA in regards to aversives, it almost always fails. And the reason why is they deal specifically with the responsibility of the school district to educate your child. What it doesn't deal with is re the treatment in regards to said child. And it is the school district's responsibility, once the decision has been made, to send them to one of these private entities to get them placed there to make sure that they get appropriate education, right? The fact that these private entities more often than not cover medical treatment as well as education, that's on the private entity, not the school district, okay? Is that kicking the can down the road? If you're going to go after places like this for their inhumane acts of seclusion as well as adversives that do physical harm, the laws you need to know like the back of your hand is the Civil Rights Law, the Rehabilitation Act, and the ADA. These are the laws on the books that are supposed to protect our human rights as human beings. But the issues are in regards to these acts is the language is not specific enough. Hence why we are trying to push the two amendments that we're trying to push. So we can get that very specific language in that can actually start in with that built in protections for people like me. We're going to go ahead and close on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, folks, we here at Spilly Tea do hope you have a good one. I will see you next vid.